Hello, this is Cheryl Sawyer, the librettist of our opera, Émilie and Voltaire. Let me take you to Brittany in France to meet the principal character, Pierre-Louis Moreau de Maupertuis, a famous mathematician and physicist whose achievements are all familiar to scientists today. Maupertuis was born in the picturesque seaport of Saint-Malo in Brittany. His father was one of its important shipping merchants, known as Corsairs, who also practiced as privateers against foreign vessels and even as pirates. The vast wealth that Monsieur Moreau earned from the sea passed to his son, and so did his noble name, de Maupertuis, granted to the family by King Louis XV not long before Pierre-Louis was born. Maupertuis received an excellent education. Like many active young men of the nobility, he became an army officer, but he soon discovered that his real interest was mathematics. Being rich, energetic and clever, he could make his own choices in life. He went to Basel, Switzerland, to study with the great mathematician Daniel Bernoulli. Maupertuis proved to be an original thinker. His work was widely read, and in 1723 he was admitted to the French Academy of Sciences, which met at the Institut de France, pictured here. Maupertuis was a Newtonian, that is, he believed, with Englishman Isaac Newton, that the movement of the spheres in the universe operates according to forces such as gravity, and that the laws of nature can all be expressed in the language of mathematics. This put Maupertuis in opposition to most of the academy, who supported the theories of the Frenchman, Descartes. Scientific debate was also fashionable in the Paris salons, where Maupertuis was a favourite because of his sparkling intelligence, his wit and his success with the ladies. In 1733, Voltaire began to take lessons from Maupertuis in mathematics and they became friends. Voltaire, deeply in love with the beautiful and learned Émilie du Châtelet, hired Maupertuis as her mathematics tutor also. Rumour had it that Maupertuis briefly became her lover, though he played somewhat hard to get, and they parted when Émilie left Paris in 1735 to live with Voltaire at her Château de Cire in the remote Champagne region. Then came Maupertuis' great expedition, which made him famous in France and throughout the scientific world as the man who flattened the earth. In 1736, he led a team of scientists and surveyors to Lapland under royal commission to prove Isaac Newton's theory that the earth is not a perfect sphere, but is relatively flatter at the poles. The expedition took 18 months and was a resounding success, despite severe winters, backbreaking work in ice and snow, and shipwreck on the voyage back. In a letter to Émilie, Maupertuis explained that when measuring the surface of an icy river, he and his team drank cognac because it was the only liquid that didn't freeze. Voltaire wrote him admiring letters from Cire, and they both pressed him to stay with them when he returned. But Maupertuis had vital things to do in Paris. He must defend his findings against opposition in the academy. He needed to publish a new book about his discoveries, La Figure de la Terre, The Shape of the Earth, and he had to arrange the fate of two women from Lapland who had rather inconveniently followed him to France. He could be forgiven for lingering in high society in the salons while he made the most of being famous, which he still is today, as we see on this modern postage stamp. He's shown here with fellow Newtonian La Condamine, who made corroborating measurements in Peru. So where was Maupertuis at when he finally decided to pay a visit to Cire and bring his friends Voltaire and Emily the latest news from the Academy? He'd established a scientific career that was set to become even more illustrious. He was a darling of the Paris salons and he was winning his battles in the Academy. Indeed, he would eventually be appointed its president. He was a far greater natural philosopher than Voltaire. He was esteemed as a writer, and he had just completed an acclaimed expedition funded by the king. What if he thought he could rival Voltaire for Emily's love? 
Find out what happens amongst these three volatile people by revisiting the Patreon page as we develop our dramatic opera, Emilie and Voltaire.